This Hangout on Air is live. Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge. Here we are, 5.52 a.m. Central Standard Time, December 4th, 2018. It's about 44 degrees outside right now, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's cold. Well, where you live, you might scoff at that and say that's not cold. Well, it's dry at least, low humidity. It got up to 81 on Sunday, 81, December 2nd, 2018. All right, now, now, what do we have? From some point in history in the 20th century, we have King Robert II blended Scotch whiskey. What year did it come out? I don't know. I know it was acquired by Ian McLeod Company in 1968, 50 years ago. But it apparently had been on the market for some decades before that. And there's a whole line of King Robert liquors. It's one of those brand lines. King Robert Gin, King Robert II Scotch, King Robert II um, Vodka, and so on. Now, the next, cont the next contestant on Dawn Busters is... An introduction from 2016, only 2016. Piper Dean blended Scotch whiskey. Piper Dean blended Scotch whiskey. These are both 80 proof, no age statement. The famous Piper Dean, well, actually the obscure Piper Dean. I think it replaced the Albert Sons. Gent. Uh, Scotch whiskey. I noticed that Albert's, they used to have Albertson's bourbon, Albertson's brandy, Albertson's blended American whiskey, Albertson's gin, Albertson's vodka, Albertson's scotch. Albert, they still, they had Albertson's Canadian blended whiskey, but I don't see that anymore. They have some small bottles of Albertson's gin at the one in Hammond, but I think that's just leftover bottles that they never have sold. They started coming out with these specialty names of each item. Some private labels will do that to sort of mimic an actual brand instead of like going to the grocery store and everything's sure fine, sure fine. Sure fine is just like a private label that many stores use or best choice or thrifty made or great value. Great value. There's another one. Um, uh, but this is they started coming out with D.W. Anders blended uh, D.W. Anders brandy. And um, all this kind of stuff. So here's the Piper Dean and the Drum Castle Irish Whiskey, which was actually much better than I had expected for a private label. But it should have been. It was about seven. It's about seventeen bucks a bottle. This is only. This was five ninety nine when I bought it. Five dollars ninety nine cents in twenty sixteen. I noticed the price has gone up to six forty nine. Fifty cent increase. Not the greatest stuff. Is it the worst Scotch whiskey I've ever tried? Let me think about that. Yes, I would say so, <laughs> but I haven't tried them all. Okay, so here's the big 1.75 liter, at least it's glass, bottle of King Robert II. This is distilled. Smells pretty good. Distilled. For a moment there, I said, that smells like sherry. <laughs> Distilled, blended and aged and bottled in Scotland. The Piper Dean, on the other hand, oak cast matured. Well, that's, they're all done that way. Premium quality. Oh, yeah. Blended Scotch whiskey, product of Scotland, an ex, an expertly blended Scotch whiskey matured in fine oak casks. Expertly blended. Mm. Well, that could be true because they just want to make the cheapest thing possible that you could tolerate. Hear what I'm saying? The cheapest thing possible that you could still tolerate. So I guess you would have to be an expert to do that. So it makes sense, expertly blended. Okay, go along with that. 
bottled by the founders company, Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. You say who in the world is the founders company? It's Sazerac, that's who it is. So it's shipped over here and then bottled, bottled in Louisville. St. Louis, King of France, Louisville. Home of Cassius Clay, home of Papa John's Pizza, home of a lot of Ohio River bridges <laughs> at the north tip top of Kentucky, I guess you'd say, on the northern edge. Cross the river, you're in Indiana. John Anili says, good morning, Ron. Good morning to you, John Anili. I had a feeling that was you watching. And um, and we have three others now. And pretty soon we have three or 400,000 probably. Well, maybe not, but maybe, hopefully. Now, uh, I see you got the Canadian Club 100% rye. Awesome fine uh, or awesome purchase. I guess it's not hard to find. I would like to buy it. But if you saw my back stock, you would probably try to do an intervention. Uh, <laughs> I just was thinking about this. I can't do any more examinations of liquor until I get this under control. So I got to do the long march through the, uh, I have to do the tournament with the uh, rich and rare reserve against all the other Canadian whiskeys. And when I started setting up the examinate the uh, contests, I said, this is going to take the all of December, all of December, because I still have to do this bourbon. Old Forrester, I got a solo review coming. Old Forrester versus um, Stedman Select, and Old Crow and Jack Daniels Black Label Old Number Seven and Jack Daniels Green Label Number Seven. I don't have too many bourbons, okay? But that, but that's and then once I do that, then we'll go Rich and Rare Reserve versus Air Everybody, Air, Air, Everybody. You know, first we'll go up against Rich and Rare, then Canadian Limited, then Royal Canadian, then Albertsons Canadian, and um, I believe there's maybe one more Sazerac uh, item. Um, and then, um, Canadian club, Canadian club, 12 year age and VO and VO gold <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. All right. So the appearance, well, I think we'll notice here. Yikes. Let me do something. Real quick. We'll notice that the Piper Dean is lighter. Piper Dean is lighter. I believe that's Piper Dean. No, sorry, King Robert II. Got it mixed up already. That's a good sign. Okay, so retraction. Piper Dean is darker and King Robert II is lighter. Amber and more gold. All right. So got to be careful not to let my like glance and see the lighter one. And But since I'm absent-minded, that's better, you see. So I won't, I won't remember anyway. Sometimes when you do in blind taste test, absent mind, it can be a benefit. Unless you put the tags on the wrong glasses, then it would really not be a benefit. But if you can mix them up real easily and then not know which is which, that's what you want to do. And I will answer my comments on my uh, videos. I never got to answer comments this morning because I woke up and then I later I, well, I was drinking coffee RT, the blackest of the black coffee and chicory dark roast, ultra dark roast. No, it's not brown, so dark it looks black. It's black. Um, but it's strange because it doesn't taste burnt. But I was looking at all the NBA, NFL highlights for the game last night. And uh, <clears throat> Philadelphia won, so now they're 6-6. Six and six. Could, still, could still be a factor there, defending world champions. World champions, you know, because there's NFL teams all over the world. More like defending... United States pro football champions. Um, okay, a little daylight coming in. Then I wanted to check the NBA highlights. The Pelicans lost again. They ought to learn how to play defense, but they won't. They don't. Then looked at all the NBA scores, the NBA standings, and then so on with college basketball women and men. And then I posted a couple of videos on Rock and Roll Club. 
Um, from the Steve Miller band, Swing Town and um, Baby's Calling Me Home. Baby Keeps Calling Me Home. All right. And then a picture of a car, 1978 Ford Fairmont, first year of the model, first model year, and um, a comic book. Superman, the, the the second volume, 1987. You know, with, remember Superman? They canceled it and then they reformulated it, rebooted it, 1987. I mean, they didn't cancel it because they were going to get rid of it. They they wanted to reboot it after 50 years on the uh, 49 years on the market. And now it's been rebooted again and again. Now that's not really working anymore. The reboot of the reboot of the reboot and the reboot and the new universe and this and that and nobody can follow the story and you don't know what's going on so i don't know it was probably a mistake to do it in 87 really they didn't have to re re redo everything they probably just needed to modify some things but do i work for warner communications warner brothers no i do not Oh, well, I want to make sure. Okay, here we go. Now we're starting to town. The town. It smells like tap water. I mean, that's the first notion in my mind. Tap water. You say tap water. Yeah, right? Like it's so light that the predominant nose is tap water. Oh, yeah, some whiskey. You say, but what about the rich peat in the the deep smokiness. Yeah, what about it? You think you're going to get that for $5.99 a bottle? You will not. <laughs> All right, there might be some wood in that tap water. Now, nah. but like I said, tolerable. You see what I mean? It, they designed it to be tolerable. That's my theory. Am I saying that they have people with an alcohol habit, let's call it, who buy bottles of scotch every week and want to pay the lowest price due to income deficit, you know, a deficit in their income level or their just their tight fisted ways. They don't want to spend money even if they have the money. Yes, there are people like that. And this would appeal to them. You say, but wouldn't quality matter? No. There are certain people that... Um, the quality doesn't matter. It's just the price, price, price. And there's, they'll die with hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, I'm talking about middle class people, never spent. Am I saying those people are bad? No. Just saying that's what they are. That's what they do. Okay. Now, if they never contribute to charity, they hold on to their money, they, you know, they keep it to themselves, they don't help others that now see then that's a problem because you can't spend the money in the grave anyway and so why you don't want to just help other people you know initially this had some smoke and peat and some character but then that's faded that's that's you ever notice when you pour these whiskeys if you let them set up and you let them breathe let's call it breathe a lot of those initial aromas will whiff waft away, they'll die away. And then you just got basic product. But that could be true for really expensive ones too. I haven't really ever done those. Okay, um, or done that procedure. And that's good with uh, skunked beers too. If you let the skunky beers that's been light damaged, light struck, set for a while, a while I don't mean a long while, a minute or two, it'll, it'll go away. Oh, so bland. Oh, so terribly bland. I might be getting a little bread, bread though, though. Huh. There's a little peat here and a little more sting in the nose. I prefer this one, but I don't know what it is yet. Mmm, woody tap water, right? Woody tap water. Let's see what you can get for five ninety nine. For five dollars and ninety nine cents plus tax, you can get a Scotch whiskey that smells remarkably like tap water with a back note of wood. Now.
or you can go to McDonald's and get that six dollar special. Um, but that'll be gone after one meal. You can keep this for a week, a week or so, and just taste it and test it and challenge it. <laughs> oh man, it's bland, but it does have some. Uh, it honestly does have smoke and wood and peat. Okay, so the the flavor has a lot more character than the aroma. And I'm not saying that the flavor has a has a whole lot of character, but it has some. So there is something. It's not terrible. And that smoke lingers. That's making me think it's King Robert II. But do I recall King Robert II being so, so neutral in the nose? I don't think I remember that. All right, let's go. Ahead. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I got scratched in my face by a cat. <sighs> because that's the general feeling you get when you sip on this. Rather harsh grain alcohol. Kind of like granulated corn yellow corn that was distilled to almost a pure liquid, pure, clear, odorless, flavorless liquid. And then blended at an 80 to 20 ratio, 20 parts single malt Scotch whiskey of not exactly the highest quality, <laughs> highest quality, but of a tolerable quality. You see what I'm saying? It's a feeling I get when I look to the West. Um, now, 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 now. I think this is the Piper Dean because of its. It's um, I'm trying to th think of a descriptor. It's lack of character. It's notable lack of character. There's a little bread dough, like bread yeast dough. I don't know what to say, like almost like po' boy bread, poor boy bread. You know, if you eat a poor boy, that the front, the crusty out, the crusty crust out exterior with the, the, the flaky inside, the crunchy flaky thing. Oh, okay. I had to open my eyes for a moment. I was scared I'd knock the glass over. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I know what it is. David Hruneck. Hello. Thanks for watching, David Hruneck. Tap water. Maxwell. Hello, Ron. Capital. He didn't capitalize it. Hello, Maxwell. Greetings to you over there, in the Russian Federation. Well, the one on my left, in my left hand, might be to your right. That one has a lot more smoked uh, characters. And um, almost like a smoked pork. Now, if the whiskey scout is watching, or if he ever watches, I noticed he posted a video yesterday, but I, I haven't watched it because I never watch videos for a product I've not had. I can't relate to it. You say, you're just, you have a hang up. You have a hang up. Maybe I do have a hang up. But I would call it a preference, okay? I just don't watch videos for beer, wine, or liquor that I've never tried. I can't relate to it. Now, once I've tried it, then I'll watch all the videos. And some of them take days to watch. I think one time I watched a video, it had like 142 videos. Some of them were unwatchable. There's a guy in Canada. I'm not gonna say his name because he might be angry about it or something. Some people, they wanna retaliate, you know? But his videos are like always like 49 minutes long and maybe five minutes of the video is related to the product. And it's all these like smirking and <laughs> jokes about stuff that I don't know what he's talking about, some inside joke. And he loves his football team and there's nothing wrong with that. And he loves his gun hobby and there's nothing wrong with that. And he's, I guess, 
conservative, probably more like neoconservative. In Canada, it might be like conservative liberal, you know, like because they're not really what you have. They don't, they don't, there is no real Canadian counterpoint, counterpart of American paleo conservative, you know, you know what I'm saying, traditional uh, old right. So it's hard to cross that border and connect the two political movements because there's no relationship. But anyway, so I don't mind any of that stuff. And if he did it a little bit, I wouldn't care. But it goes on and on and on and on. And, I, and one day I said, why am I watching this? It's like torment. So I just unsubscribe. Nothing personal. It was nothing personal. I just couldn't stand it. So of those 142 videos, I think it was his I didn't watch. And there was a few others that, where they, like, they'll have music in the background. And the music would be louder than their voice. And you could barely hear their voice. I was watching one the other day. I said, I don't even know what the man's saying. I could barely make it out. So a lot of times I'll, I won't watch them because of production issues. Or it's just a group of people and just clowning around, clowning around, and they think they're funny, they're clever. Look, we're on video, let's make jokes. And they think they're just so excited about it, but it's so horrible. So, but I'm not one to usually go put a thumbs down or something like that. I mean, I I would well, I have done it on something that's so horrendous, like maybe like a video where the music's so loud you can't hear the person talk. Maybe they'll say, Oh. I need to correct this or reshoot it, you know, redo the video. I wish there was a thing. I wish if you put a thumbs down, it would show who you were, though. Because, like, if they saw me doing it, they might say, uh, oh, Louisiana Beer Reviews, why would you put a thumbs down? And I would say, well, let me tell you why. And then, you know, you could reshoot it and talk to them. But it's like secret and you can't, then you can't engage. Why? And, you know, they got crazy people on the Internet, too. They'll have, like, six accounts. And then they'll just go to the first account, find your video, thumbs down. Second account, find your video, thumbs down. Third account, so on. It's the same person. And analytics indicates that. But, uh, of course, they have to watch the video to uh, do it. So it helps increase your view count if you're worried about that. And if you're monetized, it will increase your... Uh, earnings. But anyway, it's kind of interesting, all those little quirks and intricacies of the video review world. All right. Okay, so in, in Aroma, neither one of these is really clicking, okay? But it's strange because the Piper Dean has a better nose, but a worse mouth, taste, flavor, and the, the King Robert has a, a, a very poor nose with no character, but a lot of a lot more. How do you, how do you speak? Much more flavor. <laughs> All right. But most people buy whiskey to drink, not to just sit and smell it. So I think the King Robert II has a lot more character. It has a smoked pork flavor. Not so much peaty, but more smoky. Peaty was a pit bull. Peaty, no, not so much. Smoky, yes, quite a bit. Piper Dean. or as we call it on the street, Dean the Piper. Oh, wow. I got bit. I got bit. That is so grain alcohol. It is, it is scary almost. Yikes. That is about as base model as it gets. Like no smoke character. Virtually no peat character. It's just like cheap old grain alcohol i mean but what do you expect it's the same price as the american blended whiskeys like heaven hill blended or or, or uh, tw samuels or uh stuff like that that we get around here um uh, mccormick blended well we william and kepler william kepler and i determined that mccormick was a little bit better than the other ones not way better though. i had been very pleased with king robert ii yes me too i'm glad i bought it i'm glad you you and you Wanted me to stop at that place. I was tired that evening, went to the game and all, but sometimes I have to be pushed a little bit or I'll, I won't go and then I'll regret it later. I regret not buying the Lord Calvert Black Label. I mean, how stupid, it was only $11.99. And that dimpled bottle at that, was it, was it LaGrange, Georgia on 
U.S. Highway 27 northbound. I was like, why didn't you buy it? <sighs> I mean, I know you got too much stuff to drink and it's overloaded, but you're not going to see it again. Stupid. Isn't that black bottle? I don't know. I just didn't do it. It was just... And then when I was driving back home, I was making good time on I-85. I was like, I am not getting off the interstate to go snaking along through these towns to go by. The, and then I might go and it might be closed or something. So I, I just didn't do it. But I, I regretted it. All right. So let's reveal King Robert II. Please be right. <laughs> uh, I got to give up doing taste challenges. Oh, I'm afraid I have to tell you this right now. That says Piper Dean. Why does that say Piper Dean? Did I make some kind of mistake? Did I pour the wrong one in the wrong? Did I do it again? Did I get confused? I mean, I'm really mixed up right now. I'm like, I'm freaking out as we used to say in 1969. Well, I didn't talk much. I don't know, I don't get it. I just don't get it. Ooh, ooh. John Neely said, uh-oh. Right, uh-oh, you said it, uh-oh. Okay. I know what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here's this light color. It's almost like the Cuddy Sark is so dang light, or the Clan McGregor, even has that little greenish tinge. So I'm gonna take Piper Dean and I'm gonna pour some more. You say, that's your just excuse to drink. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't think there's too many people on the earth that are trying to find excuses to drink Piper Dean, unless you're just like a dedicated drunk. But I'm not dedicated. All right. I'm committed to, um, to taste challenges I'm trying to say to you. All right. Anyway, I'm doing this for science. I, I don't know what to do. I'm all confused. Now you see... I don't know. This still looks lighter. Let me taste it. I mean, I'll know by the taste. <sighs> Tastes like stinking pure grain alcohol. <laughs> Tastes like stinking pure grain alcohol. Oh, okay, I got it mixed up. I don't know why. I, ah. I'm 50 years old now and I get these things mixed up. What's gonna happen when I'm 70? Oh, I'll be out here. Saying, what's happening? What is, what's a computer? What is a brush? Not, where did I put my hairbrush? I'll be saying, what is a brush? What is a brush? David says, "Ha ha, dedicated." Yeah. All right. I, I gotta do one more thing. I'm really, I'm really, like, shook up a little bit. Okay, so let's take a little bit more. You say, "Oh, you're just using." Yeah. Okay. I mean, first of all, I wouldn't use excuse to, to drink more. I would just do it. I would just say, "I'm doing it." So, if you don't like it, you know, I'm sorry. Oh man, I'm gonna have to let my neighbor drink some of this. That was too big of a pour. Well, I'll just take one little sip every hour till it's gone today. No big deal. Yeah, you see, there's no aroma. It's like nothing. It's like neutral. It's like, you know, that just like a dial tone almost. Just, just nothing here. Now let's go with the taste. Oh, yeah. 
That's King Robert II. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. I screwed up. I, I got the labels mixed up because of my discombobulated. I mean, my whole personality is discombobulated to an extent. So I, I can't blame myself. I blame my personality. All right. Um. Anyway, you say, oh, no, your blind taste test has been influenced by your bias. Uh, really, though, when you think about it, who in the heck's going to be biased about King Robert II budget scotch versus Piper Dean budget scotch? You know what I'm talking about? And then viewers are going to say, I ain't, I, ain't, I haven't even heard of these two things. Why are you even doing a taste challenge with like obscure and even more obs obscure? See, that's a good point. So, I mean, if it was Cuddy Sark versus uh, J and B or Johnny Walker Red versus uh, Shivas Regal 12 year, yeah, I would reshoot the whole video because that's now you're getting into more quality products. And I didn't say super high quality, but more quality. And you really want to be careful. But with something low grade like this, but I got to say, King Robert II is not as low grade as you may believe. It's really not that bad. Just don't get the label screwed up next time you're doing a video, if you ever do one, and then you won't have all this embarrassment and silliness. Yeah. As soon as I saw Piper Dean on the label, I knew you screwed up. There's no way. It's not possible because I had had Piper Dean many times in other taste challenges, and it always failed. It always flopped. I was brushing my teeth last night. Uh, listening to Monday Night Football, and I said, I'm, I'm saying this to myself. I said, watch, Piper Dean is going to lose again. And I'm saying, mm, has Piper Dean ever won? I'm saying this to myself. Has it ever won? It should be kicked out of the taste challenges. I said, but uh, heck, what difference does that make? I'll keep using it. So as soon as I saw that, I knew I had made up, I made a procedural mistake because it's not possible that it can be that dang dull and then all of a sudden have character. It doesn't work that way. Ha ha, dedicated. And then Piper Dean, Piper Dean, right, Piper Dean. They need to change the last three letters and call it Piper Dull. D-U-L-L, -L, Piper Dull. In fact, oh, it is just grain alcohol to the hilt. Oh, I swear if you, it's, it's like, how is this scotch whiskey? Is this what they sell like in the really cheap area? You know, like, is this what the, the cut, cut rate stuff is like over in Scotland? Do they sell this kind of stuff in Scotland? I bet you they do. You know what I mean? You say, oh yeah, that's what the old, Old drunkards drink stuff like that. I mean, I can't believe it. It's almost like you can't even believe it. So Piper Dean is only available at Albertsons, says John and Neely. Well, I think what happened was since Albertsons kept buying other grocery chains, like you couldn't have Jewel Osco or uh, Amigos down in South Texas or, or uh, Super Value and all of this. And sell Albertsons whiskey. They would say, well, "Why are you selling that here?" So they decided to revamp it, where it would be some name Piper Dean or or uh, J uh, D W Anders brandy, and then it would then you could sell it at any of those stores, and people are not going to get confused, right? I think you're going to probably see that when Win Dixie pretty soon, because there's the Win Dixie Scotch, the Win Dixie Rum, Win Dixie Vodka. But I think pretty soon they're going to come up with these little pretend names so they, they can sell it at Winn-Dixie and at uh, Jitney Jungle. Because I don't think they're going to call it Southern Grocers Gin. That's not too appealing. Southern Grocers Gin. I mean, they might because Winn-Dixie Gin ain't exactly uh, a great sounding product. Ron, what type of person drinks Piper Dean willingly? Hmm. What type of person drinks Piper Dean willingly? Well, I guess a taste challenger like myself, willing to do it in a taste challenge. If if one should call it a challenge because it's so easily discernible, it, there is no challenge. I guess somebody like me that does reviews of anything and everything, no matter how bad it is, And th there's two other groups. I can only think of two other groups. A person who 
is so poor that they can't afford anything else, but maybe they have an alcohol habit. Let's call it a habit. Uh, it could be a problem too, but a habit, a habit isn't necessarily a problem, okay? You might be in a habit, but you may not have a problem. You get it? Now, if you went to AA, they'd say, no, you have a sickness, a disease. You have a disease. No, you don't have a disease. You have a bad behavior pattern, perhaps, a bad habit. Grace Slick says she liked going to Alcoholics Anonymous. She says she met a lot of nice people there. They didn't treat her like she was a big star. She was just a regular old person. And she said she would just volunteer to serve the coffee. She would serve the coffee in the little cups. And she loved doing that. And she could fit in with the because she wasn't raised with regular people. You know what I mean? She grew in a she grew up in a very wealthy home, very sheltered, went to extremely expensive public uh, private schools and colleges. So she said it was nice to actually interact with regular people that didn't live in a mansion. And she said and she liked AA and go into the meetings. It was really good. And then plus she liked to serve coffee because she could take brandy and pour it half and half coffee. You know, 50 percent coffee and 50 percent brandy and drink it while she was at the meeting. And nobody would realize, you know, that it was because it's brown on brown. So she said that was very helpful to her. Um, <laughs> keeping the uh, keep keeping the mother rolling. All right. So they have those kind of people that can't afford anything. Or have a bad habit. And then this and the second group would be people who could afford it, but they're so dang cheap skate. You know, there's such a cheap skate. They could be a millionaire. And we read about this in the paper sometimes. Millionaires, famous movie stars who are so tight. You know what I mean? Like they never buy a new car. They drive an old raggedy car and they have the money and they wear old clothes and never buy new clothes. Or they would buy Piper Dean. Even though they have the money, you know, they have like a, a mental fixation. What's their money? If they, if they want to just save it, I'm sure the bank doesn't mind. They got it all in the bank. All the went. Okay, we got to wrap this up. But I, I was so discombobulated. I, I use that word a lot because it's ap apropos. It's apropos. I still have to do a beer review later. Oh, my gosh. Um, John and Nelly said, all the Winn-Dixie stores are closing soon. What? The ones in Columbus, Georgia have closed and all the ones in Montgomery, Alabama are closed. And I was told only the privately owned stores will remain open. Well, it, th that's a company with major problems, like other grocery chains is not the only one because business climate is changing, whatever. And so Southern Grocers, who owns Winn-Dixie and Jitney Jungle, they've been closing a lot of stores. Uh, most of the Winn-Dixies around here sold out to Shoppers Value and the ones in West Louisiana sold out to Brookshire a Texas company, Brookshire, Brookshire. Uh, we still have the Winn-Dixie here. It's been here since 1958, different location now, but 1958. But how long it's going to be around, I, I don't really know. Probably not too long. But um, I mean, that's that's business. Things die, you know. I'll have to do a little more research, but I've heard from several people. And that's probably true. It's probably true. It's probably true. Um, when Dixie always said that their calling card was their beef. Remember the beef people like their fantastic meat quality. I don't know if that's still the case anymore. Meat. And then Walmart always was noted for bad quality meat. But I think that's been improving, improving quite a bit over the last 10 years. So one more thing, one more thing. Um, Yeah, this is King Robert. I'm sorry I screwed up earlier. I just apologize. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I was going to say uh, one more thing. Um, oh, yeah. I was talking about Stedman Select and Caliber and how it was a Walmart only brand. Apparently, that's not quite, that's not the case. Not the case. Because I was looking on the Iowa Liquor Control Board. It's one of those states where only the government can sell liquor. Iowa Control Board liquor stores, like 
the uh, liquor control board stores of Ontario or the ones in New Hampshire. And I think Virginia is that way. Oh, not Virginia. Um, well, maybe, yeah, Virginia and North Carolina. I don't know. I don't keep track of all that. But um, there it was on the website, Caliber, Caliber Canadian Whiskey. I said, well, I'll be doggone. I thought it was a Walmart private label. There it is on the Iowa Liquor Control Board uh, thing. Couldn't get over that. And then it says produced by Sazerac uh, of North America, Sazerac North America. Although the label says IWA um, distilling, but it's Sazerac. So I was fascinated by that. So sometimes you think you have it down pat and you know what you're talking about, but you do further research and you get stunned. Uh, Iron Man Spartan 2 says, hi, Ronald, what tipple will you have with Christmas dinner this year? Hmm. Well, that's a very good question. I am going to Christmas dinner on the Sunday before Christmas with family. And some of those people are not dedicated. They're more like decimated alcoholics. You know what I'm talking about? The kind that live in the street half the time. You know what I mean? You're like real grim, grim. Not really a uh, blood family, but uh, other relatives, whatever. Well, I don't want to get into all that, but um, so I wouldn't drink in front of them because they have a a, a willpower that rates at on a, on a willpower scale of zero to 100, 100 being iron will, unmovable iron will and zero being no willpower. They are probably at a one. You know what I mean? So if they saw me drinking, that would be it. They'd be back on the streets. So, I mean, I'll just drink water. Uh, so that would be my tipple. And if I go eat, now I have another side of the family that has rather bizarre Christmas habits. They like to go eat at Chinese buffets <laughs> on Christmas Day. I, why I don't, they just like to do it. So they might say, come on over there to Metairie. We're going to go eat at China Cafe East and all of this. Well, I'll just drink water. Wouldn't drink any alcohol. So, yeah, I know that sounds boring and bland and dull and say that's no kind of Christmas festive spirit to drink water. Yeah, well, let's say I made up for it today by having to double dip on this because of the uh, technical difficulties of my own uh, carelessness. And my father, who used to be a, if you want to call it dedicated and profound drinker, on weekends, never on work days. Now, he was disciplined. If he had to work, he wouldn't drink a drop of alcohol. But he was a weekend warrior, you know what I mean? But he always made these, like, he's still alive, but he'll make these philosophical pronouncements that are not opinions. He talks about them like they're, they're obvious facts. He says, you ever notice an old alcoholic, they're always uncomfortable if they're around people that aren't drinking. That's like some mantra he said since I was a little child. A real drunk can't stand being around people who aren't drinking. It freaks them out. They get nervous. They get they get uh, paranoid. So uh, I have noticed that because I can take it or leave it. I can just drink water at a party and be... This is satisfied as anything, as long as I got some good corn chips to eat, salty corn chips and some good onion dip. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, they'll get real paranoid, like, hey, you want something to drink? What do you or what do they say? What are you having? And I say, well, I'm just going to drink water. Then they start giving you a shifty eyed look, you know. What is he up to? It's like just drinking water. So they get they get um, nervous. So I think. The people in Metairie at the uh, Chinese, they never drink anyway. So if I drink water, I'm part of the crowd. They might be drinking iced tea and stinking Coke and Sprite, which I would, wouldn't would want to drink that. But I've noticed that they get real paranoid if you're not drinking. Real paranoid. I noticed that with marijuana smokers. They say, yeah, I'm really mellow because I smoke marijuana. I'm mellow. Don't you agree that I'm mellow? You understand how mellow I am? And I'm saying, I don't know. Your voice keeps rising in pitch somehow. 
not quite sure about the mellowness, but you insist, you say so. And then they'll act paranoid. They'll say, you don't mind if I smoke marijuana, do you? I didn't say I minded. Why are you judging me? And I'm like, well, I don't recall talking about judging people, but it's very strange, you know. Uh, anyway, David Runeck says, yikes. Okay, tough situation. It is Iron Man, but it's not really tough because I'm very pleased to drink water. Really, I'm a real big water fan. I could do a video. I could start on my own, another channel called Louisiana Water Reviews, and I could just go around reviewing tap water from different municipalities. And I would enjoy doing that. Uh, David Runeck says, I like Blue Moon's winter wheat. I loved it. A little bit chewy, a little bit syrupy, but I liked it. Good stuff, David, says John Neely. Uh, Iron Man, so you said before you love Harvey's Bristol Cream. That is no lie. I cannot lie. What food do you or, or, or snacks do you have with that? Um, honestly, I don't think I've, I don't think I recall ever drinking Harvey's Bristol Cream with any food or snacks. And I've only bought one bottle in my life. That was back when they had the cork bottles. Remember the cork cap? Now it's the screw cap. I need to go buy some more Harvey's Bristol Cream. I like cheers and pickle on a cocktail stick. Okay. I like pickles. David Runeck says, Ron, can I smoke marijuana? You can do whatever you want. Doesn't matter to me. Drinkers love company. That's true. Yeah, I, I find that they're very paranoid. So, um, <clears throat> but I'm not one of those people. I'm not paranoid. So if I was drinking beer and somebody else said, I'll just drink water, I wouldn't get nervous about it and say, well, what is that? What are you trying to do? Like, were you setting me up? You know, alcoholics, they, they're like that. They get real freaked out. If And I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Frank Zappa. I steal your uh, terminology. They get really freaked out if you're not drinking with them. And, and the marijuana people, I've noticed that too. Now I have a friend. He might still be alive. <laughs> I'm not saying it as a joke. His Facebook, his bizarre, bizarre, bizarre Facebook channel, page, whatever you call it, account, just abruptly stopped one day. And then people were making comments. Is everything okay? What's going on? And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. But he told me, uh, he said, never smoke marijuana. <laughs> he's telling me that he's telling me this. Never smoke marijuana. I said, why do you say that? Not that I was interested anyway. He said, because I tried it once and I was addicted. Marijuana is my life. That's what he told me. Marijuana is my life. He told me that around 1993. True quote, true statement, true quote. Marijuana is my life, he told me. I believed it. And one time I was at this apartment he had on the River Road in Louisiana, and him and his friend, another dedicated drug addict, but dedicated, like, like scientific in a way. They almost made it like a science, which I thought was fascinating, but insane and sick and demented at the same time. But they were over there doing their drug culture thing that they, whatever they do. I don't know. Those people have like a regimen or a routine. And they were saying, oh, yeah, you know, we're doing these dedicated drug things. And I was just sitting there. Oh, yeah, OK. So um, they had this Judas Priest cassette tape. And I said, oh, Unleashed in the East, live in Japan. I've got that. And I opened it up and a bag fell out like a, you know, a cellophane bag that was tied with a knot, flipped around and tied. But it was white powder, just very finely cut, beautifully cut, white powder, almost like baby powder. And and, and then uh, I almost said the name. Wow. So he says, whoa, never mind that. He closed it back and he pulled it back. He said, don't mind that. Ha, ha, ha. And I thought to myself, yeah, I guess I'll go home now. But then later Thomas said, uh, yeah, I love marijuana. I love dope. He always called it dope, dope. You know, but marijuana is not dope. Dope is opium. But he said, I love dope. But he said, all that other stuff, it's nothing to me. He said, I could snort coke. It's like snorting air. He said, it does nothing to me. It's neutral. I said, oh, OK. I didn't realize that it was had different um, applications for various users, but I guess that would be true. But uh, 
I've thought to myself, what a bizarre world these guys are involved in. But I don't want any part of it. I was sort of like a lurker, a live lurker. I was just watching it and thinking, it's sad. We used to go to the record shop and he would be looking with me like, oh, look, Pink Floyd Relics. And he'd grab the album. I got it. But then after he got into the marijuana uh, lifestyle, I was looking at the records. Oh, Piper from the Gates, Piper at the Gates of Dawn, or uh, music from uh, the movie La Valley, Obscured by Clouds. Look, look. And he's over there saying, Look at this pipe. It's got a skull head. Look. And I was like, Oh, Lord. <laughs> All right, I got to shut this down, but it's fun to talk about these things. Iron Man said, uh, Iron Man Spartan 2, do you like strong lager beers, for example, Carlsberg Special Brew or Perla Mockney? I've never had Carlsberg Special Brew. There's, there was a guy that was going to send me some. He's like, I'm a young man from England. I want to send you a bunch of strong brews from England. I said, okay, here's my address and everything. I insist. He kept insisting. I was like, no. So finally, I gave in to him, and he says, Oh, I checked the prices for shipping. I can't afford that. I'm a college student. So were you the one that insisted on sending it? You just kept hammering about it. Uh, what do you think it was going to cost to ship beer across the Atlantic Ocean to my house? A dollar? And I was really getting excited about that Carlsberg special brew. I said, okay, buddy, never mind. <sighs> Perla Mockney. I like the Perla Mockney to an extent. Uh, strong lagers can, can be interesting. But I, I find they're a little bit too strong. They're a little too uh, chewy, really, a little too chewy. All right, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so now this has gone on long enough. It was fun. It was fun, but now the party's winding down. The guests are leaving. <laughs> um, And I think in two days, we're going to start this Canadian adventure, and it really will be an adventure. Um, it's going to be Rich and Rare Reserve versus everybody else. And I believe that Rich and Rare Reserve may not lose a single contest. I, 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 really, I really believe that. I think Rich and Rare Reserve might beat everybody on the, on the list. Well, not Canadian Club 12-year. <laughs> I guess it won't beat that. Canadian Club 12-year will probably bust it up. But everything else is going to whip it. I really think this is my prediction. Don't don't forget this. I think Rich and Rare Reserve is going to whip everybody else in the lineup. That's how much dedication I have to Rich and Rare Reserve. And I was so excited. I only paid nine ninety nine plus tax. You can probably get it for ten ninety nine or eleven ninety nine. Believe me. Here, listen what I'm saying to you. Rich and Rare Reserve is a dynamite value. I just got this huge alert. You heard how loud that was. Michael Komarov and I are doing a brown ale examination sometime this afternoon and evening. Brown ale. I'll send you the link in case you want to join, says John and Neil A. Well, I don't have any brown ale. Uh, yeah, let me check on that. That, that, that is not a problem time-wise. I will have the time this evening. I have to do some dusting, my beer bottles and cans. I don't have to work today, but I have to see about that. I would love to do like a, oh, maybe I could get the Abita Christmas sale. I got to check on that. Okay, yeah, that could, that might, this might happen. Might, let's say it's a 50-50 shot. Um, okay, good, good idea. All right, so laissez-le, bon temps relay. Thanks for watching this somewhat problematic, but rectified. I think it was rectified uh taste challenge and join me in two days when we when we begin the dominion of canada exemplification